All right, welcome to the live stream, everyone. Here with me is Dan Frio. Uh, my name is Kyle C. Graves. You know what I don't, don't have is your little NMLS uh, number that I need to put up there. Um, uh -oh. I'll get that put up here in just a second. Um, cool. So what we're going to do on this uh, live stream is answer your home buying questions. We're going to also talk about um, how you can actually choose a mortgage rate, and people aren't really aware of the fact that you can do that. Um, so we're going to go through that. We're going to answer your questions. Dan's going to give us an update on what's happening with economics, what's going on with interest rates. Um, so Dan, how you been doing, man? I'm doing awesome, man. Hey, nice to see you. Happy New Year's, buddy. Happy New Year. We still got the snow, although has it snowed in uh, Chicago? Yet? Dude, it, we got crushed last night. It really? was, it, it, it snowed in the morning, then it rained half the day, and then it was like a blizzard come like four o'clock. So I let everybody go. It was nasty. I had a tough time getting out of my driveway this morning. Wow. It is. But the roads were really clear, but yeah. it's like uh, dusted here once. Um, so it's not, We're it's supposed not to get bad. pounded, I think Friday and Saturday. So I'm cool with that. I'll be home. Oh. I got to work on my snowblower, but other than that, thanks for asking. Uh, so here we have, um, let me see. There's a question that I can't pull up at the moment, but it's from Reginald Jenkins. Uh, is it common or normal when your mortgage company sells your loan and closes the account, your credit score drops, mine dropped 30 points. Um, so that's going to be a temporary thing that happens. So, uh, if your mortgage gets transferred to a different lender, which is super common happens with, uh, probably 80% of mortgage loans with all different types of lenders is, um, it's going to take them probably about 60 days for that new mortgage to show up on your credit report. After that, everything is going to go back to normal. So, um, it's just because it basically looked like one mortgage account got closed and there's no new one. Um, but give it two months, everything's going to go back to normal and you'll be perfectly fine. This is just a temporary thing that happens in the credit report until the uh, new servicer um, who holds your mortgage is going to report to the credit bureaus. So you're good. Hey, you, uh, you jumped right into the questions. Good job, well, I, buddy. I knew if I didn't answer that, I was going to forget it because like if questions happen before we start the stream, I, I can't like pull them up. <laughs> um, let's see who else we have in here. Just want to shout out these and then we'll go to questions. We have JC Franco. We have Bobby Bo. Uh, Yifty08, Zachary Lou, Mad Hats13, that guy263 from Virginia. Um, hey, buddy. El Nino strikes. What is it? El, is that the, uh, the, is that like the storm? Is that what El Nino Yeah, is? El Nino. Okay. That was a big compression, like a, like a weather compression down in like New Orleans or the Gulf years ago. Oh. El Nino. Or not, uh, no, maybe it was the heating of water. I don't know. I have no clue. So, Dan, you want to give us an update on what, what's going on with uh, yeah. rates? What's going on with the market? It, it, it's kind of nice. I, I posted a video uh, last Friday and a uh, couple this week that basically went over, you know, since December 31st, really nothing's happened with mortgages. The reason being is the market is you have to understand why things are happening. So mortgage rates are tied to a bond. It's not like a bank created the mortgage rates. It not, it's not like, uh, you know, the Fed controls mortgage rates. What mortgage rates are, are determined by is what's called a mortgage bond. It's a bond that trades on Wall Street. Uh, it, it took a, it, it, it rallied last year or it, it basically plummeted in value, pushing up the prices. So I won't get you all confused with that. There was a lot of bond manipulating in there as well. But the nice thing since the end of the year, there's really been no news out. So everything that you watch, it's like, even if you watch the stock market, it's like the stock market isn't doing anything today because they're waiting for data on inflation. So everything pivots around inflation. So on my channel, on a daily basis, recently, I just been focusing on the inflation data, how some of the uh, housing numbers and the housing uh, equivalent rents, they're going to be floating into us. And we're probably going to see the inflation numbers in the mid twos, probably in the next 30 to 60 days. So that's that's my forecast based on housing and, and so forth. So check out my, my channel for that. But tomorrow is when we start getting a slew of information out that, that, that the Federal Reserve really monitors. And there's two things coming out. One thing is tomorrow, that's consumer inflation. And the other one is producer inflation. That's coming out on Friday. The consumer one's called the CPI. The producer one is called the PPI. So the numbers are supposed to come in and they're supposed to start really continuing to drop gradually because we went from basically 9% down to about 3% in about six to eight months. And now the market's starting to settle. So tomorrow is gonna be basically the time that mortgage rates start to move. 
uh, basically from the beginning of the year all the way till basically right now, there's really been no data out there to, to fuel the market in a good way or a bad way. So that's basically what's going on. Stock markets all over the map, as you guys have seen. And uh, so I, I'm expecting inflation to continually cool. Uh, there's a there's a whole bunch of data and there've been people coming out, you know, saying or trying to predict what the Fed's going to do. You know, it, it, just take it with relevance. What I'd suggest you do is if you're really tied in, if you're a realtor out there, even a financial planner and you watch our channel, um, go watch my channel if you would. I go through the economic data on a daily basis. If you're a first time home buyer, you're going to probably watch my video from the time you're interested in buying till the time you close. And then you continue to watch uh Kyle's channel just to give you the, the, you know, the mortgage programs and things like that. So basically not much news out right now, but tomorrow there's a huge agenda of uh, economic data coming on uh, tomorrow, Friday, and then it keeps rolling from there. Yeah. Today's been a very slow news day. Uh, there's oh, not much there's going nothing. on. <laughs> yeah. The oil inventories, they're up. So hopefully gas prices continue to come down. And if you see bags under my eyes, have you ever, I, I'll explain this. My daughter had some rust uh, spots on her car. So okay. I had a bright idea over the weekend. I'm going to patch them. I filled them. I, 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 you know, sanded and buffed it and everything. All that dust went in my eyes. Now my eyes are all screwed up. So oh. yeah, I haven't been drinking. I haven't been, I've been getting a good night's sleep, but my eyes are all screwed up. Oh, that sucks. Uh, yeah. You want to go through some questions here and then we can jump into Absolutely. How, uh, yes. rates. Thanks for, thanks for sitting through my mumbo jumbo folks. Uh, let's see, let's see. JC Franco, uh, in the middle of escrow, any final pointers to save money? Um, also known as not get screwed by the lender, realtor, or a seller. Um, I, I don't think you're going to really run into issues where you're going to get kind of screwed over by somebody. I know a lot of people kind of have that fear, but there's just so much regulation that, that it's just really not um, something that happens. Um, the only thing I would consider uh, at this point is maybe taking your loan estimate. Um, maybe print that out or put it on one side of your screen and then your closing disclosure, put it on the other side of the screen. And that's going to show you kind of what fees change during the process because you go from an estimate to a little bit better of an estimate to the final numbers. And so usually if there's any change in costs of things or monthly payments, you can find it by seeing the difference from your loan estimate, which is what you first, your loan estimate, which is what you first expected. Do you like that timer there? You like how I was going to say, you're getting a little windy, buddy. I know. I'll I'll run down the clock a little bit so we can uh, make this fair. Um, (laughs) I would compare those two because your loan estimate you got in the beginning was what you expected the numbers to be. The closing disclosure is what the numbers are going to be. Um, So then if if there's any uh, difference there that you're uncomfortable with, ask your loan officer, hey, can you help me understand why did this change? Um, And then they can give you some clarification on that. Often it's, you know, like Dan and I were talking about before, it was... Uh, insurance can be way more than we expect it to be. And it's nothing that your lender controls or realtor controls. Um, it's just something that uh, comes in as a different cost than the estimate. And so um, that's helpful to spot those differences there. Wow. We should, one day go, we should one day go over a loan estimate with people so you, we can, they can understand, you know, how to compare different loan estimates because you can really be duped in there you know you could put in title fees if it's an estimate you're not using a specific yeah. specific title company i can put in there the title fees are 500 bucks yeah. um and that's complete that would be a complete farce you know same thing with your taxes and homeowners insurance so maybe one event we'll, we'll go over how to how to really compare loan officer uh, loan offers yeah i think that would be good uh Rebe love said hello kyle and dan appreciate your quality info uh thanks kyle and dan five stars and Justin, I made it for a live. Welcome, Justin. Um, AV8, uh, you guys are onto something with your combination here. Watch Kyle and Dan's rate update daily. What happened? Why are we getting so many compliments in here? <laughs> uh oh. Something's about to fall. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining um, us, folks. JC Franco, uh, part two my toxic trade has been to frivolously sign contracts without fully understanding them through the process. So if you're asking about some pointers, uh, I would definitely read through things. Um, especially your contracts, uh, you know, your mortgage closing documents. Those are all pretty standard boilerplate. Um, they're not going to be a ton of interesting things in there. You can read through them. It's going to probably take you a couple hours, but please read through your contracts. Um, yeah. please don't. I hope it's just a joke that you're saying that. Uh, Yifty 08, uh, if you're self-employed, do you need to show your 2023 tax return? Um, if you're applying for a mortgage before, 
April 15th. And what documents do you need to apply for a mortgage? Just 2021, 22 tax return. You want to take that? Yeah, if you're self-employed, um, yes, we, we don't need your tax returns of 2023 because you haven't produced them yet. If you've produced them, that's awesome. Here, let me give you a little bit of a tidbits behind this. If you've been in business for less than uh, 10 years, you need, you'll need two years tax returns. Okay, some programs only, if you've been in business 10 years or more, you can get away with one year taxes. Here's kind of a trick of the trade kind of sort of at this stage of the year and of the time frame. Let's say 2021, you had a fantastic year. 2022 was a good year. 2023 wasn't as good as 2021. Okay, you're following me. 2021 is fantastic. 2023 isn't so good. We don't, we want to get you through the system before you file the 2023 because that's gonna bring down your averages. However, if your 2021 is worse than your 2023, then I would suggest filing your returns and waiting so we can use that, that additional income to get you to qualify. But if you qualify with you know, either or, then there's really no relevance of it. Uh, sometimes we can get away with a certified uh, uh, CPA certification on pre-filed tax returns I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that as, as the, the law, but um, you, know, you don't need to file the taxes up to April 15th. But again, if it makes sense, I hope you guys understand where I'm going with that, that you're making more money in 2023, then we might want to wait. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, yes. Uh, let me see what other questions we have in here. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, can you explain a VA Earl? Um, so kind of really quickly, a VA Earl is basically a streamlined refinance on a VA loan. So you have to already have a VA loan and it effectively is a way that you can lower your interest rate without having to go through the whole mortgage process all over again. Um, and so it's usually a lot cheaper. It's a lot quicker. It was way less pain involved because we don't have to do a full credit evaluation and income documentation. And can you pay, you know, pay for the whole thing. Um, it's a really simple way to reduce your interest rate on your loan um, with very limited fees and cost as well. Um, so a, a very similar to how an FHA streamline works or USDA uh, streamline works. And we, we do do them. So if you need, uh, if your rate's higher and you think you can refinance now and save some money, we'd love to help. Um, Zachary, can you uh, make, can you talk about or make a video regarding what we should look for in a realtor, red flags that first time home buyers might not know to look for. That's a, I mean, I guess we could, that's a toughie because it's like, some people like my personality, some people don't like my personality. So you might be working, you know, you might have a fantastic realtor, but you guys just don't click. Um, so that's really hard. You know, here, what I would look for is there, there was a, Kyle, did you read this, the, the article that was out? And I never, I never thought this. I never thought it in my wildest dreams. They came out with a report, I think it was Monday or Tuesday. The average, you know how many uh, homes the average realtor sells? 50%. 50% uh, of them sell X or less. What uh, is that X number? It's probably like one. One. 50% of realtors sell one or no homes a year. When I saw that, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Because I do get flack from realtors. You know, what I look for is somebody who does it full time. They've been doing it for a while. And I like, I want the energy level. I don't want to just, you know, okay, we're going to go see that. And I don't want somebody pushing me on onto a, onto a realtor. Uh, we do have a system. If you'd like to use it, we can actually vet realtors in the area that you guys are looking, uh, looking for. So we can help you get pre-qualified. And then we have a system where we will we'll set you up with a realtor uh, on uh, basically in our port right now in our group of people, and they're going to actually uh, vet realtors in your area. They're going to check all the data. They're going to reach out to those people, talk to them, and so forth. It's a free service, no obligation, but it's just something we, that we offer for a lot of borrowers, especially if we get you pre-qualified, because it is hard to uh, you know to find a, a good quality realtor. And you, the yeah. last thing you want to do too is get you know set up with one, and then you just don't like them. It's like you know, uh, turning down that next date. You know, it's like you went on a date with somebody, and now it's like, hey, you want to go out tomorrow see homes? Nah, not really. You know what I mean? So well, that's a service we offer for free. Again, you don't have to use it, but we just started it about a year ago because of this exact question that we get on a on a daily basis. Actually, so great question. 
Uh, Mad Hats 13 said, I have a good income, 145000 in good credit, 760 in a low cost of living area. However, little cash savings and plan to use a 401k uh, loan for a down payment closing cost. Am I hosed for a pre-approval without cash? Um, no, you're not hosed for a pre-approval without cash. So um, basically, we, we can do a pre-qualification without you having the funds to close yet. We just need to figure out where are they going to come from. If you don't have the cash now, that's fine. We just need to figure out, is it a gift? Are you getting a loan for it? And if so, what's the timeline on it? So in your case, a 401k loan is very common. A ton of people do this. And it can be a really good option to be able to, if you don't have cash on hand or you don't have somebody um, who can gift you funds or you don't have any other money coming in, a 401k loan can be really helpful to pay for the down payment and closing costs. Um, and then the 401k loan doesn't have to count in your debt to income ratio, which is really nice. Another thing to consider is maybe negotiating some seller credits to help reduce those closing costs. So you don't have to take as big of a loan from your, uh, 401k and look, 10 seconds left. Can you the man? That's all I got to say. <laughs> you know what? We should somehow like tally these up and have some like, uh, end of the year. That would be too hard. It's too much tracking. <laughs> Uh, hello from Virginia. Hey, that guy. Um, let's see, we had a couple of people. There's in a lot well. of questions here. You guys can, uh, you, well, everybody can probably see these. It's in uh, regards to your know, rate negotiations. Uh, Google's rates good. Uh, I, I, there's a, there's a trend here I want to get to in a minute. So sorry okay. about that. Uh, Hey guys, first live show. Never missed a recorded one. Always have good info. Help me a lot. Uh, thank you. Well, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Um, Let's see. Let's answer two more questions and then jump into interest rates. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, not really mortgage related, but is there any downside to removing your PMI by having your home reappraised? Uh, if there's a downside, I'm not aware of it. Um, I, I couldn't spot a downside. The only thing I can think of is if the lender, does the lenders uh, make you pay for the reevaluation or the BPO or the appraisal? Yes. Mm-hmm. They do. So the, the the downside would be you pay for that appraisal when you it doesn't come in high enough to remove the PMI. You, yeah. you spent the money. But yeah, yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah. The process of it. Um, so normally a lender is going to do a BPO, which is a broker price opinion. So basically it's where a real estate agent kind of looks at the value of the home. They usually don't do a full fledged appraisal. A BPO is probably going to run you about 200 bucks. Um, so if you're, it depends on what your PMI is. I know my brother just had this process done and it was, man, his PMI when he bought was like $30 a month. So he, he, there's a break even period of like $200 versus $30 a month in savings. Yeah. But for a lot of people, they have mortgage insurance that sometimes is $200 a month. So yeah. it, it really makes sense. But yeah, like you mentioned, there's a possibility that you could pay for the PPO and, uh, the price isn't enough to remove uh, PMI. Uh, Miguel said to keep up the good work. Um, Thanks, Miguel. Does forbearance reporting hurt your chances to uh, refi? Um, we talking about COVID forbearance? Yeah. So here's what we're seeing. Um, a lot of the applications internally that we work on, we have to answer that question. Did you go into forbearance and so forth? Usually right now, it it's really doesn't play a role other than this. If you went into forbearance, what happened was all the missed payments that you missed or you didn't make got rolled on to the back end. Okay, so when you're looking to refinance, that is though you you might be surprised on what your new payoff is going to be because on your statements, I don't know how how old mortgage companies work, but on your statement, it's going to say here's your principal balance. But you got to remember, there's all that money on the back end that you still owe. So what's happening a lot of times is people just look at that number. Um, and then when they go to refinance, you know, we go, we run through the numbers and it's like, well, your payoffs 20,000 higher than what I anticipated it being because of the forbearance, thus your mortgage, you know, loan amount has to go up, thus your payment's going to go up. So you might not have as much savings. Uh, but yeah, that's, it, it shouldn't really play a role in the underwriting process would be, I guess, the answer that you're probably looking for. Um, let's do one more. I'm trying to log into Loan Sifter over here. Um, okay. doo -doo -doo. Uh, do mortgage lenders beef up costs to benefit themselves? How can I identify if that's happening? Uh, you want me to take that? 
Yeah, I'm trying to. Here's do a here's what we do. And there's a lot here. of questions on can you negotiate your interest rate and you know do do people upsell your interest rate and so forth. It, the interest rate should the the quote that you get from your lender should be their best effort. Here's what drives me nuts. We get loan estimates every day. We ask people, okay, you're locked in. You know, rates. You got to remember, rates two months ago were at eight percent. So some people locked in at that, and they might not have closed yet. So what we ask people to do is up, send us your loan estimate. Let us review that because just to let you guys know who we are. So Kyle and I, we work at a federal bank, and the relevancy of that is we're licensed. That because we're, we work at a federal bank, we're licensed in all fifty states as well as Puerto Rico. But we're also one of the country's largest mortgage brokers. So that gives us huge fluctuation. So when you're calling us, you might be thinking you're working with a bank, but it, we are a bank and we're also a huge brokerage. Here's where this helps you. Okay. You call a bank. They should not be able to say, okay, your rate today is seven. And then, you know, later this afternoon, oh, you know what? We're, we're competing against somebody else. We'll give you six and a half. That should not be the case. They should be able to give you their best effort going forward. What a lot of people do is they'll send us our, the loan estimate. We come back and we, we basically kill the loan estimates. And that's Kyle and I'll go over this one day with you guys. And in most cases, in a lot of cases, we're, we're lowering that person's rate and lowering their fees. OK, so once we get back to these people and say, OK, we, we can we can get you a half percent better in rate. And we can save you five thousand bucks. So then what they do is they call back their other lender and the lender's like, oh, you know, what? we, we can do that, too. We'll lower the rate. and we'll do... Why didn't they do that in the first place? That's what drives me nuts, because if you didn't do your due diligence of out there looking, you know, finding us, you would have paid a higher rate and higher fees. So the thing I would suggest is if, if that happens, don't call them back, just cancel because they, they weren't working in good faith. Now, how your bank should be able to offer you one rate, that's it, or multiple rates with different cost structures. Because we're a broker, we're set up with, we're not really set up with 70 banks at this time. I think we renewed about 60 licensings agreements over the past few, uh, few weeks for 2024. So we're, we're set up with at least 60 different lenders. So by putting your application in with us, it's going to be one application, one credit pool, and we're going to shop you with all these lenders. Okay, so we might be able to have, we might have one day, here's the rate, but that afternoon, the rates might have dropped with this other lender. So now we can go over that other lender and offer you those programs. So I just want to give you some idea from some feedback or some education that on what we exactly do. You know, we do these videos, but we're also a huge mortgage brokerage company that we're looking to looking to help you guys. So that's, did I, did that sound like in the, in the line of what, yeah. you know, what, Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah. So if we, if you already have a, a quote, like a loan estimate or a quote from another lender, um, you can just go to winthehouseyoulove.com slash compare, and you can upload it into a, uh, your quote, your loan estimate into a secure portal. Um, just make sure to upload all the pages. Sometimes people give us like one page and we need all the pages of your loan estimate. Um, and so what we'll do is when that uh, when you upload your loan estimate, it's going to come to Dan and I, and actually goes into a database that we have, um, and that's when we'll go through and see if we can uh, beat that quote. Um, and so I pulled this up here on the screen. I know it may be a little bit hard to see, and I had to remove a ton of people's like personal financial information, obviously, because um, I can't show that on here. But um, basically, this is just showing what our, the back end looks like for us. Is somebody will fill out. Uh, they'll put in their loan estimate, um, and then we'll fill in what their 10-year savings is. So we use uh, a loan comparison tool to figure out what is the long-term cost savings that we can provide to somebody. And you can see all of these people that we've helped them save money. This person, we saved them $5,000 over 10 years. One saved $18,000. One saved $28,000. Um, and this is all just in our lower fees up front and the lower interest rate um, compared to some of these other quotes. Uh, averaging out to about uh, $17,800 in 10-year savings on average that people were getting when they were sending quotes into us. Um, so I can show you the back end of how we do this. So um, we have a software that scans all the lenders that we work with, okay? Um, and let me pull this up here on screen. Uh, Dan, do you want to give me a suggestion of... Um, like yeah. a scenario you want to run through? Yeah. And the night, if, what we can also do is let's compare and show everybody the difference in rates for conventional loans versus FHA, where sometimes even with good credit scores, you can get a much better rate 
with FHA. So let's go with something fairly decent. Let's say a six, uh, we'll go with a, that, that's good, 350,000. Um, just go, the average, probably the average home we're getting right now, it's in the Midwest area. It's probably three, let's just say 300. Okay. That person's, let's let's go to make it, um, you, you got purchase price of 30 grand. It's going to mess up. Oops. Purchase price. Let's go with um, three and a half percent down. And the reason being for that is conventional loans, if you're a first time home buyer, you, you can get away with 3% down. FHA requires three and a half percent down. So, so we don't have to go through multiple scenarios. Let's just do three and a half percent down. Let's go with a conventional loan, first time home buyer. Let's put income, let's, let's put that at 680. All right, let's put monthly income of, Five, let's say 300,000, 5,500 bucks. Yeah, that's good. Um, and let's go do that, 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 and click. You're good, good, good. So what this is doing now, was this, this is a conventional loan. So you take it over from here. Okay. Um, so what this is then doing is showing us all the conventional loans available through all these different wholesalers. So uh, the way that um, we work with these different wholesalers is very similar. Like uh, this is Dan's analogy that I like a lot. So I'm going to steal it. Um, very similar to like if you go to like Costco or Sam's Club, how, uh, you know, why are things cheaper there than they might be at somewhere like Kroger or Walmart? It's because they have different relationships with wholesalers and can get those products at a cheaper price. And they also don't spend as much money on branding and marketing that increases the cost of buying stuff at some somewhere like Costco. Um, so it's very similar to how we work in a broker relationship where we have a relationship with these lenders where we can select which loan we want to use, which lender we want to use, and we get a lower rate through them than you might be able to get through that lender directly. Um, and so we can scroll through here and see the interest rate that's provided from this lender based on the scenario um, from all of these different lenders that we can scroll down through here. Um, so we can see the the rate uh, with all these is the same, but the cost is different for each. Um, and so that's where we're really looking to see the one that comes up at the top is usually going to be the one that offers the most savings. And this is just the quickest way, like Dan was mentioning, it's one application, one credit pull, and then you don't have to go talk with a bunch of lenders. We can just pull through our system and see, hey, here's this is the lender that's going to provide the best rate, the best costs um, for you here. And the nice thing too is like uh, working as brokers is we don't charge, there's no like fee to do this. Um, the lender pays us just like a lender pays every loan officer um, in the entire US. So there's no additional cost to um, working with uh, someone that has a broker relationship like this. Um, did you wanna cover, do you wanna do FHA next? Yeah, so let, let's just look at that one. This is uh, Resi Central. Now you also notice in these, everything says wholesale. So wholesale basically means wholesale. It's like, like Kyle was saying, it. it's wholesale club. So you're going to Costco. You gotta, when you go to Costco, you got to buy in bulk. You have to buy a lot. So all these investors, all these banks that were set up, we have to meet certain criteria. We have to do a certain amount of volume with them. Our financials have to be strong enough. They have to approve us as a basically a partner. Okay, so you'll notice every one of them says wholesale because you can't access these rates uh, that we have because of the volume and the relationship we have with these companies. But you can see there's Resi Central, there's the Lone Store, there's Orion, there's Next Bank, Florida Capital, CMG, I mean, the Rocket Mortgage. It just goes on and on and on. So if you were to try to figure this out, you'd, you'd be calling the all, most of these companies yourself, but the retail side of the business and getting higher rates and most likely much higher fees. And that's why you saw in the last caption that, that Kyle showed you, the average borrower that reaches out to us, we're saving about $17,000 in overall costs uh, throughout a 10 year time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we switch this to, let's say, uh, or let me just show you a general example of how we might, um, how we might do this real quick. Let me throw something up on the screen here. Uh, so do, 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 just waiting for this to load. Um, so we have a tool called the loan clarity advisor. Um, and so what we'll do is we're just going to compare, let's say conventional versus FHA, but we do this when you send in a quote to us, uh, from another lender as we'll put their quote versus our quote. Um, I keep doing 30,000. That's really annoying. 
Um, so I'll put in a $30,000 home price. And let's say we're going to compare a conventional loan um, with, let's say, 35 down. Even though the minimum is 3%, we're doing 3.5 to compare it to FHA. Um, and we were at 6.75 uh, with no points. Okay. Um, then what we're going to do is look at an FHA loan. So what we would do is we'd come back over here. I'm going to change this to FHA. Okay. Everything else here is going to be the same. We'll submit this in. All right. So now we have here, uh, this would be the best option for this client, a 5.99% on FHA. So three and a half percent down 5.99%. Uh, again, there were no points here on this loan. So um, then what we do is we look over uh, the different years of the loan. So obviously in year one, there's not going to be a huge difference between these two. Um, actually in years one, two, yeah, years one and two, conventional is the cheapest loan option here. Okay. And that's because of FHA has an upfront mortgage insurance that's added into the loan. So basically what this is saying here is if you were going to sell the home or refinance the home within two years, then you should probably go with a conventional loan. Most people are going to stay in their home or refinance within a period of 10 years on average. So that's why we tend to look at a 10 year time frame as an average time that you're going to be holding that loan. Um, most people aren't holding their loan for 30 years, so it's not always the most fair comparison. Um, and the problem with APR when you're comparing different rates and APR is APR only looks at your loan over 30 years, not over a shorter time frame that you're likely are going to be in the home for. So if we looked at 10 years, FHA is going to save in this situation, uh, $15,000 over the conventional loan. Um, and that's why it's always so interesting to use tools like this, uh, because so many people will always say like conventional is always going to be the better option. It's the cheapest option. FHA is really expensive because it has high mortgage insurance. And that used to be the case, but a change happened last year where FHA mortgage insurance has dropped a ton. So you get the lower in, uh, mortgage insurance along with the lower FHA rate, even with the upfront mortgage insurance costs that FHA has, you still are saving just shy of $16,000 over 10 years by choosing FHA over conventional. Um, so we do have this uh, link in the description. Um, if you wanna get this tool for 20% off, uh, you can just type in home um, and uh, you can use that tool for all different types of scenarios uh, that you want to run. Um, did you want to touch on anything or do you want me to jump into some questions here again? No, nope, that's good. We can get back to the questions. Sweet. All right. Let me pull up some other screens over here really quickly. Uh, Angela said, uh, thanks. So helpful. Thank you for being here, Angela. Thank you. Um, now I got to jump back to where I was at here in the questions. Um, let's see, we covered that, uh, ZL said, are quoted rates negotiable or do lender lenders offer best rates available with no haggling? Um, like Dan that's, was mentioning, that's what one I, I was earlier. reading before they, you shouldn't be able, you shouldn't be able to negotiate your rate with the bank. That, that should be the, the days of old. Now it should be the CFPB came out and it should be, here's the rate. You shouldn't be able to haggle with the rate, but in today's market, people are still haggling and banks are still doing some things. And there's a lot of litigation coming out in the background that, that you might see a lot of this coming to a, to a head shortly. Uh, Justin, how accurate is Google with current interest rates? It shows uh, about 7% looking to buy in the next six months, but don't want to bite off more than I can chew. Um, really, when you're looking at average interest rates, it's, it's kind of hard to figure out. Uh, exactly what that's going to be. There's two tools that I really like to use. Um, the first one is the CFPB. Oh, what's it called? Uh, da -da. It's CFPB Explore Interest Rates. Um, so this tool here, just Google CFPB Explore Interest Rates. And this tool takes in um, your scenario. So what did they say? 770? Yes. yes 770. Um, so if you put in 770, you choose your state. I'm gonna choose Ohio. You put in your home price, uh, your down payment, and it's gonna show you um, what the average is. So it says like in Ohio, most lenders are offering rates uh, at or below 6.75%. Um, however, you do have to be, keep in mind that these are quoted with a really wide range of points. So anywhere from negative points to positive discount points. Um, so this can give you an idea 
Uh, another one is mortgagenewsdaily.com. And we use this a lot to see what average mortgage rates are. Uh, this tends to have what we found to be one of the more accurate uh, averages. Um, so it shows with conventional loans, jumbo loans, ARMS, FHA, and uh, VA. Uh, Yvonne, how much grant can you get being a first time home buyer if the home is $354,000? Um, for if I was in your position, if I was looking at like the, the one plus program that we have where you do 1% down and you get a 2% grant is if you bump up your down payment a little bit more to cover that extra $4,000, you'll be at the maximum loan limit of that program, which is $350,000. Um, well, actually, no, your down payments, pro uh, let me say this real quick. I can't do that kind of math in my head. If the, the loan's 354, you're going to go 97% oh. of that. You'll, you'll be, be good. good. Yep, it'll be good. Uh, so you can get the 2% grant on that, which would be uh, really great. Uh, he, he, he's the handsome one. I'm the smart one. <laughs> I can't do the math uh, in my head like that. Um, <laughs> thanks for the answer on my previous question. Uh, I know you've mentioned in the past we should have a lawyer as part of our team. What contracts do you recommend I have them review? Um, have I recommended having a lawyer? I, I would. I mean, it's, I don't, I don't know if you have, I've always used an attorney every time I bought a house because I just, I just like, it's like an insurance policy. You know, they're there to help you basically with the, 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 the attorney is going to do, he's going to review that for basically your loopholes to get out, get out of the contract. Meaning if everything goes smoothly, actually your, your attorney is not going to do much of anything, believe it or not. It's when things derail, it's like insurance policies anywhere, you know, you're hoping that the house doesn't catch on fire. You're hoping you don't get hail damage, but when you do, it's always nice to have that insurance. So the attorney is there basically to help you find those loopholes. And also, you know, some, there's a lot of unreputable people out there. They might be trying to slide in some things in that contract that you, because you only do this maybe once or twice in your lifetime, you're not going to catch it. So that's why I always use an attorney. And if you're going to hire them, it's basically a flat fee, have them review everything. That's, that would be my recommendation. But it, you you are yeah. not, you don't have to have an attorney, but I think it's my my gut feeling and personally, it's usually about 500 bucks. I spend that gladly just as a as a comfort, I yeah. guess is a way to put it. Do you usually get an attorney or you your whole family's in real estate? So Yeah, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, all my family's in real estate. Um, I, I can't escape real estate if I tried. Uh, I'm normally kind of in the, the perspective and, you know, maybe I think this way because this is how my, so my, my dad's a real estate broker and this is like how he teaches agents, um, how to work And his philosophy has always been like the agent's job. The value of an agent isn't to show houses. It's to help people understand how to exit contracts. So like a realtor, um, has a very limited scope in their license where the, a realtor cannot practice law but a realtor can give advice on real estate contracts and understanding the law about real estate contracts. And so I lean a little bit more towards the real estate agent should be doing the job of helping you understand how to um, understand your contract in a way that makes sense to you uh, in a way that's not all the legalese. They should be able to boil that down in a much more simple way. And also they should be uh, their main value of an agent should be helping you understand how to exit contracts um, safely and without risk. Uh, if, if needed. Um, and if your agent can't do that, then yeah, an attorney is probably going to be helpful, but I've always kind of been under the thought of like the value of an agent is not in the fact that they can go show you a house. That's not like, that's a very simple task, <laughs> like oh, unlocking a door and scheduling a showing time. Um, it's yeah. more of being able to understand how to exit that contract. But, uh, yeah, I mean, an attorney can do that as well. Um, I guess it just depends the, uh, skill and ability of the real estate agent, I guess. Yeah. And that goes back to choosing, how do you choose a really good realtor? It, it's tough. And that's why we, we created this vetting system about a year ago. Uh, do, 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 do. Mike, uh, just purchased my first multifamily 5.75 interest rate. Um, I want to get another one. What rate is worth refinancing if I have to wait a year or at least or so I was told. Um, I have to wait a year. How'd you get least. five in a five point? If you just purchased it, how'd you get five, seven, five? It must've been about a, at least 
eight to 12 months ago, but that's the relative. That's the first thing I thought of because rates hit 8% in October. Yeah. Um, so as far as like waiting a year for refinancing, uh, you don't have to wait a year to refinance necessarily. Basically with a multifamily, if you're living in one unit and renting out the others, you need to live in the home for at least a year um, before you move out and rent out that unit. Otherwise, you need to refinance into an investment home. So for instance, if you've only been living in the multifamily for six months, and then you're like, I want to go buy another one, move out of this multifamily and rent out my unit, then you need to refinance that into an investment loan. You cannot choose not to, but that would be mortgage fraud and your loan can be called due and you could also have additional penalties um, that get put in there. So that's a risk that I wouldn't suggest taking. Um, but if you live in the home for at least a year, you don't have to refinance into an investment property. So that's how house hacking works is live in the home or live in a unit for a year. Then after that, you've satisfied your intention to occupy as a primary residence. You can then move out of the home without refinancing, uh, purchase an, another home um, without refinancing your multifamily into an investment property. But Mike uh, did five, reply. Mike did put a secondary post up. He bought last January and he bought down the rate. So thanks for clarifying uh, that. I wasn't trying to call you out on it. I was just, I'm like, that rate's pretty darn good, you know, from where yeah. we, we just came off of. So thanks, Mike. Um, do, 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 do. Can the grant program you guys offer be used on a duplex? Uh, yes, it's- Hey, there's my, there's my fishing guy. One to four units. Oh, it is, it is the fish. I forgot about that. Um, uh, I don't know how to say that. Uh, do you see an uptick in home price appreciation in SoCal when mortgage rates retreat this year? That's that's hard. And I try to stay away from home predictions because I don't know every specific area. That's why Kyle and I, before we went online, we were talking about a system we use. We use a system called Altos. Um, I would highly suggest you use it because it, it gives you relevant data. Here, here's the thing that really drives me nuts is you have all these, these YouTube people out there that, you know, the world's going to end, the market's going to crash. You know, how many people said it was going to crash the last two, three, four years, you know, worst crash that we've ever seen. The overall markets have been up every year. So there are areas that are down a little bit and, and moving. What we do on the back end a lot is we use this system. Uh, if anybody knows the the guys that work at Altos, <clears throat> we would love to get uh, set them up with to do a do a collaboration or something. So if anybody's out there knows these guys, I've reached out to them several times and wait for some feedback. But we use their system because I don't want to guess, you know. And it and so many people just go out there. The world's going to crash. You know, home home prices have to crash because they went up so high. Well, they they don't have to. Uh, that's not a good reason why. So Southern California, here's what I'm seeing: rates come down. There's a pent up demand of people looking to buy. I trust me. I got, we have, this is how many people we're going to be closing this month. And there's only three of us here. So, you know, we have, we have a lot of people applying for loans and buying houses. So there's pent up demand. Every time rates take a little bit more of a dip, the phones start ringing more and more and more. So what you're going to see is a lot of these areas, even if they saw a little bit of a decline, when the prices, the rates start coming down, you're going to have more and more people jumping back in that market. And then the only other thing that could affect things in, in your local area is how much construction is there. If your market has a lot, a lot of construction, you're going to either have a flat market or it might even come down. But if your market, there isn't a lot of construction, and why I say that is, think of how houses come to market. So to make the supply out there, because I always talk on my channel, supply and demand, economics, okay? What caused the 2008 crash? Well, everybody was going in, everybody's house payment tripled, in, in, tripled. So they were basically forced to put their houses on the market. So you had a huge supply, you know, push out there. And that basically, the, the demand couldn't absorb it. So prices had to come down. So unless your market right now has huge construction, people aren't putting their house on the market who own the existing homes. And you're not also, you're also not getting homes out of foreclosure. You know, foreclosures are at basically a historic low, the lowest they've ever been other than the last couple of years that we've seen because there was a moratorium. So people have equity in their homes. Okay. So they don't have to go into foreclosure. They can sell their house, pay off the mortgage and, and pocket a little bit of money. 
foreclosures occur when you owe more in your house than it's worth. So we don't have a, a, a huge foreclosure market coming and we don't have a, you know, unless rates get down to about four and a half percent, you're not going to see existing homes hit the market as well. So please focus in on the construction in your area. That's going to be the determinant is if your prices are going to come down or continue to rally up. Mm -hmm. Oh. You should have put that one minute ticker up there. Was you know, I, I was I was about to, but then I was like, man, this feels really passive aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Look That's who it is, fun. Robin. Hey, Robin. Hey, Robin. Uh, for whatever reason, Robin, it came, when was this? Maybe a couple months ago. When we were every time Robin would come in, we just had everyone say, "Hey, Robin." So I think we need to fill the chat with a bunch of "Hey, Robins" again. Uh, Hello, Robin. I forget what. Maybe I think. Robin mentioned it was like their first time or something. Joining yeah, we so. changed the time. We used to do Wednesdays at like, what time was it? Six o'clock, my time, uh, seven, uh, seven o'clock Eastern. Yeah. It, Robin, it just got too late. Kyle and I, by the time I get home and have dinner and do whatever, it's seven, eight o'clock. We're tired. So we figured, you know, can we do this during the day and we'll have enough traction? So that's what we asked. If you guys are watching right now, please you know, post where you're call, where you're you're listening from. Because we want to make sure that we can have people from New York all the way to San Diego being able to have the opportunity to watch us. Yeah. Um, yeah, and some, somehow this time is working well because we still have uh, maybe 90-ish people here on like the multi-stream. Um, so just really quick, uh, just we should probably do this like every 10 minutes or so. Uh, yeah. Dan and I, we, we work as uh, loan officers in all of the U.S., so our, our team loans in all of the U.S. We'd be happy to help you. We do a free consultation call. Um, you can schedule a call at winthehouseyoulove.com. Um, you just do a, a quick 15-minute application after the call. We'll show you your quotes, and then you can shop for a home. You can also ask us questions. It's very similar to how we do it here. It's just you get a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time than us kind of fielding through questions. So winthehouseyoulove.com. Uh, schedule a call with a mortgage advisor on our team, and we'd be happy to uh, to help out. Um, we have Growing Life Organic is in California. Ricardo's in Chicago. We have Wisconsin for K-State Dreaming. Uh, MC Marley's in Boston. Cali for Riri Love. Uh, Mike Silva, Massachusetts. Um, Zachary said, PST time zone, sadly for me, the previous evening for you, time worked better for me. Yeah, that is the unfortunate side is uh, on the West Coast. It's a little bit. Uh, a little bit early. Uh, Daniel's in Texas. Angela's in Angela is in Nashville, Tennessee, and a realtor. Oh, cool. Um, oh, sweet. Mayor's in New Lenox, Illinois market. That's right. That's uh, not far from here. I'm in and, Naperville. Um, okay, let's get to some other questions here. MC, oh, I'm sorry. I'll go to that question in just a second. Uh, James, builders are now offering, we got to get into our speed round, Dan. Yep, okay. <laughs> it's time to start busting out Start now. Um, Builders now offer lower rates than banks. What do you think about that? Is it a good idea to take the loan from the builder directly? Um, I can take that. Uh, builders have been offering incentives for a quite a while. Were you afraid that I didn't have that timer up? It wasn't showing for a second. I saw your uh, your reaction there. Um, yeah, builders have been offering lower rates because they'll partner with an in-house lender. And so they're offering some insane credits that it's just difficult for most lenders to beat because they have an affiliate partnership. How this is legal, I don't know, but I would absolutely take advantage of it if I was in that position. There's nothing, uh, just because it's to us a gray area legally, it has nothing to do with you. You'll never get in trouble. Um, it's more of a just, we're like, how are these companies have an affiliate relationship and it's uh, yeah. fine. But anyway, you're getting some cost savings. Uh, if you can get a better, uh, big credit by going with the builder's lender, we would suggest uh, doing that. Um, and just to tag on, we we do do loan estimate comparisons. I said do do, so you got me there. Uh, you can go to winthehouseyoulove.com slash compare and uh, feel free to send us a quote that you have from a builder or another lender. Um, but if the builder's lender is offering you something better, we'll tell you um, and, and tell you to go with them. Yep. Um, all right, MC I've Marley. Had, yeah, I've yeah. had several calls this week for people looking for home equity loans. We do them, but what I'd suggest you do, and I might be blowing my bubble on this one, our, our uh, truly Kyle and I, my passion, we want to educate you guys so you don't get duped, I guess is the best way to do this. That's why we're transparent. We show you everything even behind the scenes. I've had several people call me that had fantastic credit, a ton of equity. I'm like, you know what? Call your local bank. They'll probably do it for free. So 
we have your best interest in mind. You know, I, I make money by doing loans, but if I know that the, your, your bank will probably offer you the loan for free, that's the first one I'm going to do. Same thing with a builder. You send me a builder quote and it's killing what I can offer you, by all means, take it. And we do come out there and tell you, take their loan. But yeah. when you're looking to refinance down the road or whatever, please, you know, keep us in mind and at least give us a shot. That's all we ask. Yeah. Find another lender that's putting all of their uh, their loan sifter rates on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Imps, and why is that not showing up? Uh, hi, both. I've been following for uh, a long time now. Uh, thanks for all the info. My wife and I are looking into buying a two to three uh, family home. Do banks consider future rent as income? This is an easy one. Should I give you a 10 second timer? Yeah. <laughs> yes. What we do is we use the future rents uh, and normally add that to your income. And that's, that's how it's used. So you don't know the future rents or the landlord doesn't give you that information. How do we get it? Well, basically we're, we're going to get it from the, the appraisal. So you're going to have an appraisal done. Uh, it's going to show on there what the rents are, and then we're going to use 75% of that and push that over into your numbers to help out. Because, you know, if you're buying a four unit building, you'd probably never qualify without the rents. So yes, you can use the rents. Yep. Um, sweet. Let's see. Can you have two FHA loans simultaneously? Love you both. You guys are really the best on YouTube. Um, appreciate it. Uh, yes, you can under certain circumstances. Um, it's not going to be common for most people. Uh, usually you have to have some sort of like exception. Um, usually that there's going to be like a job relocation that's around 100 miles away. I'm sorry, job relocation or you're moving 100 miles away um, or maybe you co-signed on another FHA loan, um, reach out to us and we can see what your situation is and see if you can qualify. But FHA is very aware that people try to use, take advantage of the loans and use them as investment loans. And so underwriters are not dumb. They're regular people who are like are pretty smart and can see if you're trying to use it as an investment loan. Um, so that's what FHA is, tries to be aware of is they don't want their loans to be uh, manipulated as investment loans. So... Short answer, yes, under circumstances, um, but it can be difficult to do. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, here's a good question from Ange B. Let me see if I can pull this up. Where did it, where did that, where to go, where to go? Um, where is that? For some reason, it's not showing up on my thing. And I don't know how to... Huh, okay. Anyway, uh, the question is, are your underwriters in-house? Is there a benefit to having an in-house underwriter as opposed uh, to not? Um, you know, that's, I hear that as a talking point in a, quite a few lenders um, where they're like, our underwriters are in-house so we can talk to them. Oh, so are you, are you saying you're suggesting that they uh, illegally push a loan towards an approval? Is that what the suggestion is? Having an underwriter in-house doesn't uh, increase odds of an approval happening because that would be mortgage fraud. Um, so really, I have never seen a huge benefit to there being in-house underwriting. Um, as I know Dan and I have talked about before on some live streams, is that often what can happen is if you work with one lender, you're stuck with their systems and processes. And what we found is we can work with one lender as a broker, and if they're taking too long or they're having a process that's really frustrating or requires a lot of documentation, we can say, Hey, we're going to pull this loan and move it to another wholesaler and go with their underwriting team. So we have access to over 60 different underwriting teams. And so we're going to go with the one that has the, the best process for our clients rather than just being stuck with one in-house uh, underwriting team. Well, here's, so, the, no. here's the other thing we got. Remember we, we had somebody there, it's like, you guys are just YouTubers. How do I know I can trust you or whatever? Or the, uh, the one, well, they're not local. So how would you, how would you answer the question is why, why wouldn't, are you, would you be okay using a lender that's not local? No, that's not a question there. That's just me asking you. So you know how some people oh. say, well, you know, our, our, I'd rather you use a local lender. So what would your comeback be on that? Oh, is there any sorry. difference well, my, using? I was just you know, I was just trying to figure out my uh, <laughs> the questions thing stopped working. Like Got it's it. not I can see them on YouTube, but they're not pulling in on my little thing, which is really annoying. Gotcha. I don't know how to fix that. We get we get comments from a lot of people saying, you know, I don't really trust them. Why don't Why don't you use my my lender because they're local? So take that one. 
How would, oh, what would your um, response? I mean, sure. I mean, we're we're a local lender. <laughs> like we're oh, we yeah. just happen to be on YouTube. Um, yeah, like I'm a uh, phone call. I'm a phone call away. We we it's not exist. like anybody comes in and visits us, anyways. Yeah, our our office is in Naperville. Um, I mean, we're we're a local lender. Uh, we just happen to have a YouTube channel. Um, that doesn't make us like a some like theoretical online thing. Um, so it's it's always a little silly. Uh, and I I know I've I heard a lot of realtors kind of do that too. They're like, well, yeah, lenders local, so I can go into their office and yell at them. I'm like, what kind of businesses are you running that ha- require this much like uh, combative? Like yeah. we're strong arming people. That's just not how real estate works. Um, it's not how, certainly how to make a, a good home buying process. So um, yeah, I mean you you can call us, uh, you can email us. Um, we function at, just as a local lender. Um, I'm really annoyed that my questions thing is isn't working, so I can't really pull them up. But I'll ha- just have to say them out loud uh, if that works for you, Dan. Just don't um, make up something to stump me. That's all I ask. I'm gonna find one. I'm gonna find one on purpose to try to stop you. Um, that's really annoying. I don't know. Okay. Oh well. I'll get over it. Uh, Venice. It's working. Saint Paul. Well, that's for no new ones are coming in, which is the, my first. Okay, got it. Uh, when is the best time to buy? Can you buy a home with a 721 credit score? And what percentage is required to put down? You want to take that? Best time. Best time to buy whenever you're ready. That's the perfect, you know, when are you going to be ready? Do you have enough money in the bank? Do you have some reserves? Are you comfortable? Are you comfortable in the house that you're looking to buy? Are you going to be in that area for maybe three, minimally three to five years? Are you ready, you know, financially and so forth? So let me answer the other part of that question because I can't really answer, you know, when is the best time to buy? Because never try to time something. You know, it's like, I'd say like Bitcoin or something like that. If you bought Bitcoin years ago, you bought it at a dollar and it went to $100,000 and now it's back down to 47000 So it's all over the map. Never try to time the market. It's really difficult and most of the times you're not going to win. Uh, but other than that, 720 credit score, fantastic. Basically, 740 credit score puts you in the top A category. So once you get 740 and above on credit scores, you're probably most likely going to get the best rate in the market. Uh, so that's that part of it. And down payment for first time home buyers, normally what most people are doing right now with most of the contracts we have in, they're either putting down 3% or 5%. So mm-hmm. it's, it's between those areas. You don't need the 10%. You don't need 20%. In most cases, you know, they're going with between three and 5% when they're buying their first house. Yep. Um, Let's see. I've been on my property for two years. Can I buy another home as a first-time home buyer and use down payment plans as first-time home buyer, or do they have to be purchased as investment properties? Um, so, a first-time home buyer is someone who hasn't been on title to a home in the past three years. Um, so, you won't qualify as a first-time home buyer, uh, but you don't have to buy another home as an investment property unless it's going to be an investment property. So, if you're moving out of your current home and buying another home. Um, to live in, then you just buy it as a primary residence and it, you don't have to be a first time home buyer. Um, the down payment for a primary residence when you're buying your a second home um, is going to be 5% down on conventional, 3.5% down on FHA. Um, and that's again for your second primary residence, not a secondary home. Uh, so just to clarify there. Oh, uh, Daniel said, I got a new home in summer of 2023 and I plan to refinance in a year or two. Is that too soon? And will the PMI drop off after on FHA after 20% principal paid? You want me to do that? You want to put yeah. a timer up? You put 30 seconds unless you got the prompt at 50. Yeah, <laughs> so you I got it there. It's a little okay. Hey, Daniel. Um, I saw, Daniel, I, 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 we might have helped you because I, I recognize you from probably maybe the live streams. So you bought it summer of 2023 and I plan to refinance in a year or two. Is that too soon? It's never too soon. One, it makes sense. So what you want to do is basically a rule of thumb that most people usually live by is once the rate drops one full percent, you know, start kicking the tires. However, it depends on how big your mortgage is. You know, I'm working on several mortgages right now that are a million dollars plus. So a half a percent reduction in those rates are substantial savings. So that's, you know, so check out or reach out to us. I can give you what the rate would be. We can do some rate comparisons or payment comparisons and, you know, go from there. Uh, PMI will not drop off on FHA. Um, There's two pieces of this. When you purchase the property, if you put down minimally, if you put down less than 10%, you have PMI on there forever. If you put down 10% or more, your PMI is on there for 11 years uh, and then will go off. 
they don't they don't allow you to go in and reappraise the place to remove the PMI. It's either on there for all 30 years or on there 11 years. There's no gray areas. It, it, that's set in stone. Um, Justin, is it possible to buy points down for the life of the loan while doing a ready one home loan? A one plus probably or home ready ready one. or a one the one plus loan. Yeah, it's yes, you can buy down uh, the, the rate. Actually, yes, you can buy down the rate for the life of the loan. And then how the buy down works is the buy downs work from that rate you bought it down to. So let's say, for example, the rate going rate today is six. You bought it down to or six and a half. You bought it down to six. And now you want to do the two one buy down. Well, it'll be the two one buy down would take you down to four percent. You see what I'm saying? You were at six. So then the two one buy down would go two percent lower than that, put you at four year one put you at 5% interest rate at year two, and then you'd be at 6% for the life of the loan uh, at 6% going forward. Yep. Um, sweet. Well, we are just hit an hour here. Um, so here's how we can help. Um, if you have questions, you want to move forward in the home buying process and get pre-qualified, we'd be happy to help you out. You can just schedule a call at winthehouseyoulove.com. Um, just click get pre-qualified and you can schedule a call uh, at a time that works for you and you'll be on a call with a, a mortgage advisor on our team. We can answer your questions and help you see uh, your quotes and get pre-qualified so you can shop for a home. Um, if you have any additional questions, you can also go to the website and there's a little button to ask us a question and we reply with a video as well. Um, but we'll be here uh, next week, same time, same place, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, thank you all for being here and uh, we look forward to talking with you soon. Take care folks.